part of the exercise targeted for the NEET PG examination. Okay, this is just uh, the NEET PG examination which will help you. So, already I have covered up the two sessions and this is the third part of the clinical MCQ. So, let us solve it. Okay, so yes, I am audible and you can hear me. Okay, so before starting the session, meanwhile the aspirants are joining, I would like to tell you about myself, myself Dr. Mona Lisa. I have done my MD Anatomy from Armed Force Medical College Pune and I am here to discuss the clinical anatomy MCQs today which is very very helpful if you want to target uh, a good rank. So it is important that we should revise all the clinical MCQs related to the topic. Okay, now let us talk about the special class features. When I am talking about the special class feature, it is an interactive session where the learners and the educators can interact. Polls are conducted among the learners and you can participate in the poll and it is highly, highly beneficial for you. Raise your hands and get your doubts clear right itself when the session is going on. Never ever miss a session. My dear aspirants, never ever miss a session. So, and once the session is finished, PDF will be downloaded and it will be highly, highly beneficial for you. And anytime, anywhere, read from the top educators of Anacademy platform. So yes, my dear aspirants, these are the benefits of joining the special class. Now let's talk about the All India Mock Test. What I want you to know that All India Mock Test is going to happen on 19th Feb 9 a.m. So please log this date and enroll in this All India Mock Test by using the code ANAT10. So just enroll in this test by using the code ANAT10. Okay, so this will be based on the pattern of NEET PG examination. So it will be highly, highly beneficial for you. So just mark this uh, uh, this date and be present. Okay, my dear aspirants, let's talk about the plus subscription. When I'm talking about the plus subscription, uh, it's uh, it's um, it's the session where all the 19 subjects are cleared in a very very it's uh, covered all the important topics of all 19 subjects is targeted and taken by the top educators and your uh, systematic study can be done study from india's top educators compete in live test and quizzes study on the device of your choice assess more than 25000 mcqs soon you will be provided with the printed notes of the an academy so these are the benefits which is the additional benefits of joining the plus course every fourth session on a plus course is a doubt clearing session use this code and add 10 for getting extra discount of 10 percent iconic subscription the merging of the prep ladder and an academy has been done so already i have talked about the plus subscription of an academy and the benefits when i'm talking about the prep ladder that means you can target all the clinical integrated essentials of the prep ladder video lectures from the dream team q bank 3 can be assessed rapid revision snapshots and treasure dream notes and pdf notes can be uh, availed by you my dear aspirants, congratulations to the topper of FMG December session 2021. I am very, very happy to share this image with me, with you all and I want to wish them best of luck so that they can target their NEET PG examination in the first attempt. Need PG subscription uh, of the plus and the iconic. So uh, what I want you to show this slide where you can see the comparison of both the Need PG plus subscription and iconic subscription. Go for it. Use this code for getting additional 10% discount. Now, updated and highly effective QBank is there on the platform of Anacademy where 25,000 more clinical uh, MCQs are there. So, you can target this based on this latest pattern of examination and this includes a detailed explanation for each and every MCQ. So, go for it. Use the code ANAT10 and get an extra discount of 10%. So, avail this opportunity my dear aspirants and let us start with the MCQ now. So, can we start? So, yes my dear aspirants. So, let us start with the MCQs now. So, I would like to start with the first MCQ, the first clinical MCQs. A 22 year old man is thrown through a plate glass wall in a fight. Okay, plate glass wall in a fight. Radiological examination reveals that lateral border of his right scapula is shattered. He is admitted to the emergency department and physical examination reveals difficulty in lateral rotation of the arm. There is difficulty in the lateral rotation of the arm. So, which of the following muscle could most likely be injured in this case? So, your time starts now. Please go through it, this MCQ and mark the correct answer, my dear aspirants. So, which is according to you the correct answer? So, we have got five options and you have to mark the correct answer. Your time starts now. Okay, so yes, my dear aspirants, I will wait for a few, uh, few seconds and then I will uh, move on with the second MCQ. 
so i will just move on with the second mcq just wait for few seconds and then i will move on with the second mcq so yes waiting for your answers so okay my dear aspirants let me firstly highlight so highlight the key point the key point here is that uh, uh, reveals lateral border of the right scapula is shattered but most important point is which of the following action is affected so see here on physical examination there is the patient is having difficulty in lateral rotation of the arm the patient is having difficulty in lateral rotation of the arm so yes i got an answer from bablu kumar he is telling b as the correct answer okay so mr bablu you are absolutely correct so yes mr bablu you are absolutely correct so actually b is the correct answer and i will tell you why because directly this mcq is uh, among the option provided we have to know the action of the muscle and we can clearly see that um, we know that there are two lateral rotators of the arm one is infraspinatus another is teres minor so teres minor is not mentioned so we will go with infraspinatus as the correct answer so these are the options which is provided and let me write the action of each of this muscle so uh, so when i am talking about so we have got infraspinatus as the correct answer now when i am talking about so when i am talking about uh, uh, the muscle uh, teres major so when i am talking about teres major it is not the right answer the reason is that it is not the right answer the reason is that its action is medial rotation and adduction of arm what is the action the action is medial rotation and adduction of arm infraspinatus is the right answer and the action of infraspinatus muscle is lateral rotation of arm and this was asked in the mcq so this is the right answer latissimus dorsi is again not the right answer the reason is that the action of latissimus dorsi muscle is medial rotation it is causing medial rotation extension and that of adduction of arm so it is also causing medial rotation not causing lateral rotation so this can't be the right answer trapezius can anybody tell me the action of trapezius muscle the most important action is elevation of the scapula it elevates the scapula so it elevates the scapula and it is involved along with serratus anterior muscle in overhead abduction of arm trapezius muscle elevates the scapula and rotate the scapula above the horizontal level it rotates the scapula above the horizontal level and it is involved in the case of overhead abduction it rotates the scapula it rotates the scapula above horizontal level above horizontal level means above 90 degree it is involved in hyper abduct abduct uh, above 90 degree abduction of arm supraspinatus muscle and we know that supraspinatus muscle is involved in initiation of abduction the action is initiation of abduction and we know that the action of supraspinatus muscle is it is involved in 0 to 15 degree of abduction so by this we are clear that only infraspinatus muscle among the option provided is the correct answer along with infraspinatus muscle we have got also teres minor muscle which is pro which is pro, uh, which is causing lateral rotation of the arm but the option which was provided was only infraspinatus so we will go with infraspinatus as the correct answer okay my dear aspirants let's move on to the next one that is question number 7 a 62 year old man is admitted to the emergency department after severe car crash okay a 62 year old man is involved in an emergency department after severe crash okay so after severe crash and uh, uh, so let me talk about uh, it's uh, what is the injury so actually uh, he has got a whip uh, a whip slash injury mri examination reveals severe hairline vertebral fractures in the cervical region impinging the dorsal primary rami of the same level so which nerve is involved dorsal rami of the nerves are involved two months later after the injury the patient uh, recovered well however still there is some weakness on the function of the muscle so which of the following muscle is most likely affected so options provided is rhomboidus major levator scapulae rhomboidus minor semi spinalis capitis latissimus dorsi so yes please mark the correct answer my dear aspirants according to you which is the correct answer according to you which is the correct answer which is the correct answer so your time starts now 
so what is the key point which i want to highlight the muscle is uh, getting innovation from dorsal rami dorsal rami that is the key point okay i got an answer from bablu kumar c rhomboidus minor okay so what about others rhomboidus minor actually for solving this mcq correct it is important that you should know the nerve supply of each of this muscle and then i would also like to uh, so actually in this option so firstly let's talk about uh, the whole of the muscle which is provided and in this uh, mcq we have to know which muscle is getting innervation from dorsal rami so let's talk about innervation of all the muscle when i am talking about rhomboidus major muscle both rhomboidus major and minor so we have got both rhomboidus major and minor as the option so i got uh, another answer from parvej parvej is telling rhomboidus major okay let me explain it all of you don't worry i will give you the correct answer so for uh, solving this mcq right it is important that we should know the innervation and the nerve supply of each of this individual muscle so rhomboidus major is getting innervation from rhomboidus major muscle is getting innervation from dorsal scapular nerve dorsal scapular nerve is having the root value c5 rhomboidus minor is also getting innervation from dorsal scapular nerve and dorsal scapular nerve is having the root value c5 now levator scapuli muscle when i am talking about levator scapuli muscle it is getting innervation from c3 and c4 it is getting innervation from c3 and c4 and also from c5 that is dorsal scapular nerve now my dear aspirants these are all getting innervation from ventral rami all these are getting innervation from which rami ventral rami ventral rami all these muscles are getting innervation from ventral rami and also latissimus dorsi the nerve supply can anybody tell me the nerve supply of latissimus dorsi muscle it is getting innervation from thoraco dorsal nerve which is also called as nerve to latissimus uh, uh, dorsi the root value is c6 c7 and c8 and it is also getting innervation from ventral rami only semi spinalis muscle is the correct answer the reason is that why semi spinalis muscle is the correct answer because it is the one muscle which is getting innervation from dorsal rami okay actually semi spinalis capitis is the muscle of semi spinalis group we have got semi spinalis capitis we have got semi spinalis thoracic and serv services and these all muscles are muscles of back deeper aspect so here the semi spinalis capitis muscle is getting innervation from the dorsal rami okay so it is getting innervation from the dorsal rami and basically the nerve involved is dorsal rami of c2 and c3 that is from the greater occipital nerve greater occipital nerve so greater occipital nerve via c2 and also from the dorsal ramus of c3 also from the dorsal ramus of c3 so please note down so we have got the correct answer so this is the reason we will mark semi spinalis capitis as the correct answer because it is getting innervation from dorsal rami rest all muscles are getting innervation from ventral rami so which is the correct answer here so that is the reason we will mark semi spinalis capitis and d option as the correct answer because this is one of the muscle getting innervation from dorsal rami among the option provided now before jumping to the next mcq i would like to just give you brief idea of semi spinalis capitis muscle semi spinalis capitis muscle if you will uh, see the uh, the muscles of the back it is lying semi spinalis capitis muscle is located just medial to longissimus cervix or longissimus capitis muscle the next important point is its origin so it arises from the uh, from the tip of transverse process of the upper 6 or 7 thoracic and also from the c7 as you can see also from the c7 cervical vertebra and from the thoracic and also from the articular surfaces of c4 to c6 cervical vertebra okay so you see here here it is shown also till the level of t6 thoracic vertebra its origin is occurring it's also i will like to write the origin and insertion so slightly uh, enlarging this diagram is it okay okay slightly i am enlarging this diagram and you can clearly see the semi spinalis muscle so my dear aspirants please write down about origin of the muscle so when we are talking about the origin of the muscle it is uh, mm, first is the location the location is it lies medial to 
longissimus cervicis and the capitis muscle now let's talk about origin so origin point is please write down the important points of origin it arises but by series of tendons it arises from the tip of transverse processes of upper six thoracic vertebra so basically upper six thoracic vertebra sometimes upper seven also sometimes upper seven thoracic vertebra also and also from the seventh as you can see here in the diagram also from c7 so also it arises from the seven seven cervical vertebra also from seven cervical vertebrae transverse process tip other than that articular surface the third point of origin is it also arises from the articular surfaces of the cervical vertebra so write down it also arises from articular processes of c4 to c6 cervical vertebra is it clear everyone so in short i have written about the origin of the semispinalis capitis muscle okay so you just it is not necessary that uh, exactly the crux point you have to know and exactly uh, you can just know that it is arising from the cervical c7 and that of upper 6 or 7 thoracic vertebra okay now coming to the insertion insertion is quite clear in this diagram let me just highlight this diagram so see here this bone is occipital bone this is occipital bone and exact insertion is occurring in the occipital bone to be more specific insertion is in the occipital bone it is exactly lying between the superior and inferior nuchal line so what about insertion insertion of semispinalis capitis muscle is it is inserting between superior and inferior nuchal line superior and inferior nuchal line of the occipital bone okay so is it clear now it's clear now so uh, our question was not exactly semispinalis muscle to be uh, studied in detail but as it was there i, I just show you the diagram and just revised you the origin and insertion and the other important point is that if we talk about its action when the bilateral contraction of semispinalis capitis muscle occurs it will uh, it is involved in extension extension of the head when unilateral contraction occurs it causes lateral flexion of the head so that means unilateral contraction is responsible for lateral flexion of the head and bilateral contraction is responsible for extension of the head so done with this so is it quite clear so clearly it is known that the correct answer will be semispinalis capitis among the list provided this is the one muscle which is getting innovation from dorsal rami okay so let's talk about the next one next mcq question number third all the best to everyone all the best for the question number third a 42 year old man is admitted to the hospital with retrosternal pain retrosternal pain endoscopy and biopsy examination of trachea reveals a malignant growth at the right main bronchus at the right main bronchus which of the following lymph node will most likely will be first infiltrated by the cancerous cells from the malignancy the group of lymph node options which is provided here is inferior tracheobronchial uh, lymph node paratracheal lymph node bronchomediastinal trunk bronchopulmonary and thoracic duct so yes you will get uh, you will be provided with 30 seconds and then you can mark the correct answer okay everyone parvez kumar bablu kumar you can give your answer whichever you feel that it is correct so the again i would like to mark the crux point or the uh, which will help you to target the correct answer so in this mcq the most important point is that uh, retrosternal endoscopy biopsy trachea malignant growth yeah this is the most important growth is occurring at the right main bronchus right main bronchus is involved so which of the following lymph node is most likely first infiltrated first infiltrated so right bronchus is involved and which is the uh, lymph node to be involved and it would be the firstly infiltrated this is the mcq which has been asked so now you have to give me the answer so my dear aspirants it is important for marking the correct answer that you should know the location of important lymph nodes that is inferior tracheobronchial uh, lymph node paratracheal 
bronchomediastinal thoracic duct it is very important that you should know its correct uh, location so i got an answer from bablu okay so let me explain you okay so we have got the option and uh, Firstly, I would like to mark the correct answer and then I will move up with the location. So, most important thing is you have to know the location. So, here um, the right primary bronchus could drain the lymphatics into inferior tracheobronchial. The correct answer will be inferior tracheobronchial lymph node. This is the correct answer. Okay. So, actually uh, uh, here bronchomediastinal. So, bronchomediastinal trunk is wrong thoracic duct is wrong okay thoracic duct is wrong and bronchomediastinal trunk is wrong so this is exactly uh, it is not correct and it is wrong because they are not lymph node they are not lymph nodes they are lymphatic trunks they are not exactly lymph node they are lymphatic trunks okay now so, lymph from the right principal bronchus, firstly it drains into inferior uh, tracheobronchial lymph nodes and from inferior tracheobronchial lymph node, it will drain into superior tracheobronchial lymph nodes. When we are talking about paratracheal lymph node, why it is not the correct answer? The reason is that paratracheal lymph node, if we talk about its location, its paratracheal lymph node receives uh, um, lymphatics from superior tracheobronchial lymph node and it lies superiorly. Paratracheal lymph nodes is lying on either side of the trachea superiorly. It lies on either side of trachea. Okay. And uh, uh, so when we are talking over bronchopulmonary, it is located in the hilum of the lung. It is also not the correct answer because it is located in the hilum of the lung. So don't worry, important. So I got an answer from Parvez and he is telling D. So let me explain. Don't worry. Please firstly note down the location. So we have done with this actually... Uh, the lymphatics from inferior tracheobronchial lymph node will uh, go into superior tracheobronchial lymph node. Then superior tracheobronchial lymph node will drain into paratracheal lymph node. And ultimately the lymph tract will ascend in, the, uh, in this direction. And um, important here is that we have to know the location. So let me give you the uh, correct location and then I will show you the diagram. So let's come up with that. Okay. So firstly please write down the location of... Mm, the important uh, lymph nodes in relation to trachea and bronchus. So, we have got following group of, so inferior tracheobronchial lymph node is the correct answer. Inferior tracheobronchial lymph node is the correct answer and the reason is that why it is the correct answer because the location of inferior tracheobronchial lymph node is location is just below bifurcation of it is lying just below the bifurcation of two bronchi okay so just below the bifurcation of the two bronchi that is right in the left hand side there is location of inferior tracheobronchial lymph node now okay paratracheal lymph node paratracheal lymph node Okay, so inferior tracheobronchial node, uh, branchial lymph node is just below the bifurcation and pa okay and what about superior? So I didn't written the superior, superior also I will write here when I am talking about superior tracheobronchial lymph node, it is located above the bifurcation, above the bifurcation. So it is located above the bifurcation of the uh, bronchi, so it is lying more superior, paratracheo tracheal paratracheal lymph node when i am talking about paratracheal lymph node it is lying on either side of trachea now the next is this was the third what is the uh, next one bronchopulmonary lymph node bronchopulmonary lymph node this was also asked in the mcq as one of the option bronchopulmonary lymph node is located in the hilum of each lung and pulmonary lymph nodes when i am talking about pulmonary lymph nodes this was not in the option but uh, please note this also that it is embedded in the lung substance where it is lying it is embedded in the lung substance so with this explanation it is quite clear that the correct answer will be inferior tracheobronchial lymph node because it is lying below the bifurcation so it will be lying on the right bronchial lymph node 
Okay, so now see this diagram. So let me just highlight this diagram, enlarge this diagram. So here you can see clearly, in this diagram you can clearly see, this is the paratracheal lymph node which is located on either side of trachea. It is located on either side of the trachea. See here. Now, pre-tracheal lymph node is lying anterior to trachea. It is lying anterior to trachea. It is lying anterior. Now, superior tracheobronchial lymph node is lying above the bifurcation. See here. It is lying just above the bifurcation of trachea, above the bifurcation of trachea and just when the trachea is bifurcating into the principal bronchus below it you can see there is location of inferior tracheobronchial lymph node so is it clear from the diagram that which would be the right answer so this is clearly giving you the correct picture and you can understand that the most correct answer to be affected in this case will be inferior tracheobronchial lymph node so we have got the answer okay so done with this is it okay let's move on to the next one that is question number fourth Question number fourth. All the best, my dear aspirants. All the best. A three-year-old, a three-year-old man who fell from a tree complains of severe pain over the right side of the chest because of rib fracture at the mid-axillary line. He is admitted to the hospital due to his difficulty in breathing. Radiological and physical examination reveals atelectasis resulting from accumulation of blood in his pleural space resulting in hemothorax what is the most likely source of bleeding to cause the hemothorax okay so this is a case of atelectasis accumulation of blood accumulation of blood in the pleural space resulting in hemothorax. So, this blood is source. What is the source of this blood um, accumulated hemothorax reason? Whether it is left common carotid artery, whether it is intercostal vessels, whether it is pulmonary arteries, whether it is pulmonary veins of internal thoracic artery, which is the correct answer. Your time starts now. Please mark the correct answer. What is the source of bleeding of hemothorax? Question number four. So, I got an answer from Naveen. I am waiting for others to give the answer. So, Naveen, my dear Naveen, you are absolutely correct. Naveen is absolutely correct. Yes, the source of blood uh, leaking is, the source of blood which is leaking is from the intercostal vessels. Okay. In between the intercostal space, we have got the arrangement of nerves and vessels in the form of van as we move from above to down. As we move from above to down. So, the vessel arteries to be affected is the intercostal vessels intercostal vein intercostal arteries and that is the source of bleeding not the internal thoracic left common pulmonary or pulmonary veins okay okay so let's see due to rib fracture what happens intercostal vessels are damaged so subsequently what happens after the rib fracture the intercostal vessels are damaged and this will lead to the parietal pleura getting torn and the blood flows into the pleural space now, the negative pressure which is built up in the pleural cavity, this is the reason of collapse of the lung. This is the reason of collapse of the lung. So, this is the basically the important points to be targeted. Now, see this diagram. Here, I want you to show the relation of intercostal vessels and the nerve in the intercostal space. So, I am just enlarging this image. And when I am enlarging in this image, you can see the structures as we move from superficial to deeper aspect the most superficial structure is sorry the most superficial structure which you are seeing here is the skin so uh, and then below the skin we have got superficial fascia then we have got external intercostal muscle internal and innermost intercostal muscle and in between innermost and so this is the layer skin superficial fascia external intercostal internal and innermost so in between innermost so this is internal intercostal muscle this is internal and this is innermost this is innermost okay so in between the middle and that of the um, innermost layer of the muscle we have got intercostal vein we have got the vein as the most superficial structure 
and just below vein we have got the artery uh, and then the lower most structure in this category we have got the nerve so the correct um, formula for remembering this is v a n van from above to downward so the leaking of blood will be occurring from the source of intercostal arteries so we have got uh, in uh, we have got intercostal arteries we have got posterior intercostal arteries and we have got anterior intercostal arteries so uh, so let's uh, focus on anterior and posterior intercostal arteries when i am talking about posterior intercostal arteries please note down posterior intercostal arteries are the branch of can anybody want to give me the answer posterior intercostal arteries are branch of they are the branch of descending thoracic aorta they are directly the branch of descending thoracic aorta which is shown in this diagram so see here these uh, and how many we have got we have got 11 pairs we have got 11 pairs of the posterior intercostal artery in this first and second in this first and second posterior intercostal arteries are the branch of superior intercostal artery and superior intercostal artery is a branch of costo cervical trunk costo cervical trunk got it costo cervical trunk got it my dear aspirants so now let's see the anterior intercostal artery so when i am talking about anterior intercostal arteries we have got two pairs on either side and this anterior intercostal artery which is shown in this diagram anterior intercostal arteries are the branches of internal thoracic artery anterior intercostal artery in the upper six intercostal space they are the branches of internal thoracic artery as shown in the diagram which is clearly shown in the diagram first second third fourth fifth and sixth but seven eight and nine so please focus on seven eight and nine seven eight and nine so when i am talking about seven eight and nine anterior intercostal artery it is the branch of terminal branch it is not a branch or directly from internal thoracic artery but seven eight and nine anterior intercostal arteries are the branch of can anybody uh, give me the answer it is shown in the diagram also it is a branch of musculophrenic artery these are the branches of musculophrenic artery we know that internal thoracic artery divides into two terminal branches one is superior epigastric and other is musculophrenic artery seventh eighth and ninth anterior intercostal arteries are the branch of musculophrenic artery got it everyone so this is the reason uh, of the bleeding now let's talk about the other option which was mentioned here so other option which was mentioned was okay carotid vessel can't be the source of bleeding because it is not injured when there is injury in the lung or in the thorax region pulmonary vessels is not is actually formed within the parenchyma of the lung and could not be injured by such external injury internal thoracic artery we know that anterior intercostal artery source is internal thoracic artery but it is quite protected inside the sternum can you see here here you can appreciate that this is the uh, internal thoracic artery and it is quite protected with the sternum and that of the ribs so this is not getting to be injured so we have got internal thoracic artery as also the wrong option so we have got the right answer can we move on to the next mcq everyone is it okay naveen Parves, yes. So let's move on to the next. That is question number five. So is it clear to everyone? So after this explanation, it is quite clear that the correct answer will be intercostal vessel, which is the source of bleeding. Okay, let's move on to the next question number fifth. A fifteen-year-old boy underwent appendectomy two weeks post operatively the patient complains of numbness of the skin over the pubic region and anterior portion of his genitalias okay which of the following nerves was most likely to be injured during the operation whether the nerve is pudendal nerve genitofemoral spinal nerve t10 subcostal ilioinguinal so your time starts now you will get 30 seconds for marking the correct answer according to you which is the reason of nerve being involved in this operation numbness of the skin over pubic region and anterior portion of his genitalia are involved so what is the reason and which nerve is involved in this case your time starts now please mark the correct answer
okay i okay i got an answer from navin what about others what about others so whether it is right or wrong you can mark the answer okay whichever you feel uh, uh, is according to you correct or whichever hint you get so i will tell you the hint which is given in this operation so the area the area which is involved so the skin over pubic region the skin over the pubic region is involved and anterior portion of his genitalia are involved so which of the following nerve is affected so my dear aspirants the correct answer is ilioinguinal nerve and let me give you a proper explanation why ilioinguinal nerve is the correct answer okay so ilioinguinal nerve when we are talking we know that ilioinguinal nerve is one of the branch from lumbar plexus and it is having the root value it is formed by ventral ramus of l1 nerve first lumbar nerve now if we talk about its innervate innervation area of ilioinguinal nerve it innervates the skin around the iliac crest and anterior portion of the urogenital region and upper part of the inner thigh so see here upper part of inner thigh is involved area of iliac crest is also involved and the area or the portion of urogenital so here upper portion you can clearly see the upper portion of the inner thigh is involved so in this it's it's a usual pathway which takes place between the macburney's point and when it is injured in case of append uh, appendectomy operation the upper thigh skin innervation can be uh, lost and can be numbness will be presented in the patient because of ilioinguinal nerve being involved okay so this is the reason it goes upper upper inner aspect of the thigh so see here anterior portion of his gen genitalia and the skin over pubic area so these are getting innervation from that of ilioinguinal nerve so this is the correct answer so here you can see this diagram also here you actually ilioinguinal nerve has been shown here so you can see here ilioinguinal nerve which also give innervation to the iliac crest region after that it travels lower down it is not exactly passing through deep inguinal ring but it is a passing uh, through the inguinal canal and it is giving innervation to the anterior thigh medial aspect okay now let's talk about the other uh, option so it is also very easy when you want to uh, give the correct answer you have to rule out the other option one of the option was spinal nerve t10 so actually the genito femoral nerve so spinal nerve t10 genito femoral nerve and pudendal nerve is exactly not located in the area of incision or so it is also important that the operation which is mentioned is appendectomy so we know that it is located at mac burney's point so we have to also trace it it is not exactly that which area is numbed but we have to also trace the nerve so it is exactly if we talk about genito femoral nerve and pudendal nerve it is not exactly at the at the incision area of appendectomy okay when we are talking about genito femoral nerve it passes below the incision level okay so when it passes okay so uh, yes uh, rishu uh, uh, neat ug uh, this is for the neat pg dear so uh, then we can uh, Uh, you should uh, neat ug as uh, neat ug aspirants uh, i think better will be you should um, ask the educators of neat ug platform okay so genito femoral nerve provide innervation to this abdominal wall and it is actually not exactly at the level of appendectomy incision which is provided genito femoral nerve if we talk about it is giving innervation to genital structures it is going lower down giving innervation to the scrotum and when we talk about the femoral branch it is giving innervation to the skin of the femoral triangle but exactly if we trace the ilioinguinal nerve it is coming from the upper aspect it is giving innervation to the iliac region is iliac crest region and then it passes through the upper inner thigh and urogenital region so this will be the perfect right answer now when we talk about spinal nerve t10 we know that t10 is giving innervation to the umbilical region so it can't be the right answer subcostal t12 so we know that subcostal is uh, nerve is giving innervation to the skin level below the costal margin and lower portion of abdominal wall and it is lying above please note down it is lying above the pubic region so it can't be the right answer pudendal nerve which is formed by the ventral rami of s2 s3 and s4 it is giving both sensory and motor innervation to perineal region exactly perineum region exactly okay rishi so don't worry um, so you can ask the uh, educators of the ug platform okay all the best rishi you can target your examination let's move on to the next 
So let's move on to the next MCQ that is MCQ number 6th. A 62 year old woman is admitted to the emergency department with abdominal pain of uncertain origin. A CT scan reveals an aortic aneurysm affecting the origin of superior mesenteric artery. Result in ischemia of an ab uh, abdominal organ. Which of the following organ is most likely affected in this condition? 62 year old women admitted to the emergency department. Now, aortic aneurysm. This is very important point that an um, CT scan imaging is revealing an aortic aneurysm is seen in the condition. Aortic aneurysm is there and affecting the origin of superior mesenteric artery. Affecting the origin of superior mesenteric artery resulting in ischemia of the abdominal region. So, which of the following structure is affected? Okay, so please mark the correct answer. Options are ileum, transverse colon, spleen, stomach, duodenum. The artery to be affected is superior mesenteric artery. Okay. So, I got one of the answer from uh, Mr. Santos. He is telling transverse colon is the correct answer. Let me give the correct answer. So, how you are going to approach this MCQ? So, actually the first thing is that we will rule out um, the incorrect option. So, here spleen, stomach and duodenum. These three structures can't be the right answer. What is the reason? We know the artery of foregut is celiac trunk. We know that the artery of midgut, superior mesenteric artery, artery of ingut is inferior mesenteric artery. So, spleen, stomach and duodenum, these are all getting supplied. These are all supplied by, and these are all getting blood supply or vascular supply by the branches of celiac trunk. And celiac trunk, which is at the level of T12, it's an ventral branch of the um, superior mesenteric and superior mesenteric artery, which is also a branch of abdominal aorta ventral, which is given at the level of L1. So, they are not getting uh, blood supply from superior mesenteric artery source. So, this can't be the correct answer. Now, the confusion lies between these two options. So, either ileum can be the correct or the colon can be correct. Here, the correct answer is ileum and let me tell you the reason why ileum is the correct answer. Okay. So, here the artery involved is superior mesenteric artery. So, see here. Now, ileum is the correct answer because it's just the ileum. So, when we are talking about ileum, ileum is the only option which is provided in this MCQ which is getting uh, blood supply from the branches of superior mesenteric artery. We know that superior mesenteric artery is giving jejunal branches, it is giving ileal branches. So, we have got superior mesenteric artery is providing many art branches. Uh, it is giving uh, inferior pancreatic or duodenal branches, middle colic, right colic, uh, jejunal, ileal. So, from the ileal branches of superior mesenteric artery, directly ileum is getting the blood supply. Now, why transverse colon is not the answer? The reason is that transverse colon is also getting blood supply from the branch of superior mesenteric artery. But to be more specific, it is getting blood supply from marginal artery and this marginal artery of Drummond is formed by anastomosis between right colic artery which is a branch of superior mesenteric artery and left colic artery which is a branch of inferior mesenteric artery. That means it is getting in a way uh, that that means it is getting blood supply from both the source. Yes, Naveen, you are absolutely correct. Now, see here. So, so, what you can write here for the correct answer, it's ileum is the correct answer because ileum is getting blood supply from direct branch of superior mesenteric artery, which branches ileal branches. Okay, transverse colon is the option which is not correct. Why? Because it is getting blood supply from both superior mesenteric artery branch. Superior mesenteric artery branch is the right colic which is giving its blood supply along with inferior mesenteric artery which is giving left colic artery and these two colic arteries are forming artery of marginal artery or artery of Drummond. Okay marginal artery or artery of Drummond. So, only superior mesenteric artery is the source of ileum. So, we will mark ileum as the correct answer. Now, see here, I want to show you the various arteries. So, you can see here, let me enlarge this diagram. 
so when i am enlarging it you can see superior mesenteric artery which was asked in the mcq given at the level of l1 important branches of superior mesenteric artery is shown here jejunal and iliac Ileal is giving blood supply to the ileum loop. Other than that, it gives ileocolic artery, right colic, middle colic artery. Okay. Now, here you can see also the branches of uh, inferior mesenteric artery. So, this is superior mesenteric artery. This is inferior mesenteric artery. Superior mesenteric artery given at the level of L1. Inferior mesenteric artery given at the level of L3. Its branches are left colic artery, sigmoidal artery and superior rectal artery. So, it is giving three branches, left colic sigmoidal and that of superior mesenteric. Now, we have already seen the branches of uh, uh, superior mesenteric that is middle colic, right colic, okay, middle colic, right colic. Also, uh, it gives ileocolic branches and it gives jejunal and ileal branches. Now, here you can see the marginal artery. So, here this is the marginal artery which you are seeing and this marginal artery which is giving uh, blood supply to transverse colon, transverse colon is basically formed from the branches of anastomosis from left colic and that of right colic. Okay, so this is clear here. Now, here you can see in this diagram, you can revise the branches of superior mesenteric artery. 1 centimeter below the celiac trunk, that is L1 level, it gives jejunal branches and ileal branches. It gives other than that, ileocolic inferior pancreatic or duodenal artery is the first branch of the superior mesenteric artery. It also gives middle colic, ileocolic and right colic artery. So, this diagram is showing you all the branches of superior mesenteric artery. Done. Let's move on to the next MCQ, question number 7. In, a, in performing laparoscopic hernia repair on a 24-year-old female gymnast, the surgical uh, resident observed that the bright reflection provided by the tissues of the iliopubic tract. Iliopubic tract. Iliopubic tract. Okay. The iliopubic tract could be traced medially to the site of femoral herniation. So, my dear aspirants, iliopubic tract can be best characterized by which of the following statements. So, you have to know iliopubic tract is formed by which structure. So, indirectly it is asking that iliopubic tract is formed by which of the following structure. The options are, uh, iliopubic tract represent aponeurotic origin of transverse abdominis. Iliopubic tract is forming lateral boundary of Hazelback triangle. Iliopubic tract form lateral boundary of femoral ring. Iliopubic tract forms the part of inguinal ligament. Are getting attached to the pectineal ligament. Iliopubic tract is lateral extension of pectineal ligament. So, five options are there. Please mark the most correct answer. Your time starts now. Easy one only. Please mark the correct answer. I have also discussed one or two times this MCQ directly that iliopubic tract is formed by which of the following muscle aponeurosis or structure. Okay, so let's mark the correct answer. So, Naveen is telling the correct answer. Yes, great Naveen. Naveen is absolutely correct. Iliopubic tract represents the aponeurotic origin of transverse abdominis. Okay. So, yes, Naveen, you are perfectly correct, dear. Yes, this is the most correct. All other statements are wrong and I will show you various images to get the right answer. Don't worry. So, when I am talking about iliopubic tract, it is a reflected band of aponeurotic tissues which is getting its origin from transverse abdomen. So, this was exactly the first A option. So, it is the correct option, which is uh, more uh, 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 clearly visualized by a laparoscope. So, yes, A, Naveen, absolutely correct. Well done, Naveen, you are giving all the answers correct. Very good. So, this is the correct answer. Now, in this diagram, you can see the iliopubic tract. And this is formed by the arch of the transverse abdominis muscle aponeurosis. Arch of transverse abdominis muscle forming iliopubic tract. Got it? Now, the lateral border of inguinal triangle. So, inguinal triangle which is also called as Hazelback triangle, we know that laterally it is bounded by inferior epigastric vessels. Actually, we can memorize the boundary by the mnemonic rib. Here, P stands for Popart's ligament and Popart's ligament is other name of 
for parts ligament is other name of inguinal ligament okay we know that for parts ligament is the other name of inguinal ligament so lateral border of inguinal triangle is formed by inferior epigastric vessel in it is uh, getting inferior boundary by inguinal ligament and medially by rectus abdominis muscle the lateral border of femoral ring is formed by femoral vein and connective tissue separating it from the femoral canal so i would also like to show you the image of femoral ring and on lateral we have lateral aspect of femoral actually femoral ring is formed by the base or the upper margin of femoral canal lateral to femoral canal we have got femoral vein so see here femoral ring is the base of femoral canal and the part of intestine can sometimes passes through this femoral ring into the femoral canal and will lead to the herniation that is femoral hernia so here you can see this is the femoral ring this is the femoral ring let me just enlarge this diagram this is the exactly the femoral ring and lateral to it lies the femoral vessels to be more specific this femoral vein is lying lateral to it is it okay lateral to it okay so this is the femoral sheath which is containing the upper part of femoral vessels upper 3 4 cm and the medial most part of the femoral sheath is containing the femoral canal upper margin of femoral canal or base is femoral ring okay now femoral ring boundary so if i talk about the boundaries please have a look on the boundaries of femoral ring which is the upper margin of femoral canal anteriorly it is bounded by inguinal ligament so this is the structure which is anteriorly it will be having the inguinal ligament on more medial part it is called gimber net actually medial extension of the inguinal ligament is gimber net so anteriorly inguinal ligament posteriorly it will have the pectineal ligament posterior aspect will be having the pectineal ligament medially the crescentic part of the lacunar ligament so this actually here this part will be the gimber net or lacunar ligament this will be the inguinal ligament so inguinal ligament anteriorly lacunar ligament or gimber net ligament is the same thing which is forming its uh, medial aspect and laterally it is separated by which structure this is femoral vein so laterally it is separated by femoral vein so actually this diagram is clearly giving you the uh, idea of femoral ring boundaries femoral ring boundaries okay now this is the diagram which is showing the green color triangular area which you are seeing here is the hazelback triangle or inguinal triangle hazelback triangle or inguinal triangle which you are seeing in rectus abdominis muscle is forming its medial boundary this will be the inguinal ligament which is forming its uh, inferior boundary and and this diagram you can see here this is the inferior epigastric vessels and inferior epigastric vessels are forming its lateral boundary lateral boundary okay so the boundaries when we memorize by rip p is the other pop part ligament inguinal lig ligament other name is pop part ligament clear now also you can see here the extent of inguinal ligament which is from the as you can see here this is anterior superior iliac spine it is extending till the level of pubic tubercle so it is extending till the level of pubic tubercle so from pubic tubercle to that of uh, uh, anterior superior iliac spine we have got the inguinal ligament its extensions are called as lacunar ligament which is will be on the medial triangular deeper aspect and other than that its extensions are pectineal ligament and it is having ilio inguinal and reflected part so one schematic diagram i want to show now i will come to that point the part of inguinal ligament attached to the pectineal ligament is the gimber net or lacunar ligament pectineal ligament becomes more less and dense if you go and trace it laterally from the femoral artery through ilio pubic eminences actually the extension of the um, medial uh, actually the extension of the medial deep part of inguinal ligament is triangular is gimber net ligament and its extension when it is ex extended more laterally towards the ilio pectineal eminences it is called as cooper's ligament or pectineal ligament this diagram will help you to understand see here here you can see this is from anterior superior iliac spine and this is to the pubic tubercle so my dear aspirants what you can appreciate here the anterior superior iliac let me enlarge this diagram anterior superior iliac spine till the pubic tubercle we have got inguinal ligament clear we are having inguinal ligament now so this is exactly the inguinal ligament now 
here on the deeper aspect if you will see i will use a darker green for this this triangular ligament from the deeper aspect which is called as lacunar ligament the other name of lacunar ligament is gimber net ligament it is also called as gimber net ligament which is the medial deeper aspect attached to the uh, pubic region and medial triangular extension now when the extension is going more laterally from the lacunar ligament here this extension which you are seeing towards the iliopectineal eminences this is called as pectineal ligament which is also called as pectineal ligament is also called as cooper's ligament now a downward extension when i am talking about a downward extension from inguinal ligament to iliopectineal eminences it is called as ilio inguinal ligament a downward extension which you are seeing in this diagram which is extending from inguinal ligament to iliopectineal eminences is called as ilio inguinal ligament few fibers are reflected uh, superiorly medially meets with the other side that is called as reflected part of inguinal ligament so these four parts lacunar ligament gimber net ligament and the ilio uh, ilio inguinal ligament and reflected part are the four extensions from inguinal ligament which is quite clear by seeing this diagram okay is it okay so done with this so it is quite clear by seeing this diagram okay so my dear aspirants let me uh, just proceed uh, we will again connect tomorrow so before that i just want to uh, tell few important points one of the important point is do join all india mock test which is going to happen on 19 feb 9 am okay 19 feb 9 am get enrolled in this free test by using the code nat10 okay and just after finishing this session you can connect to me for the open house you can connect to me for the open house okay i will start that on the anacademy app so all of you can connect to me also for uh, uh, for taking the subscription you can see the comparison of plus and iconic which has been shown you can use my code for an extra discount of 10% so you will get an extra discount of 10% by using the code anat10 which will be highly beneficial for you Yes, and my dear aspirants, I would also like to thank you for uh, being present and uh, do uh, do uh, present for the special free session, which is highly beneficial on the Anacademy app. Get enrolled for the free sessions by using the code and add ten, and uh, uh, you can also download the PDF notes if you are attending the session live. So I will take on Wednesday free special sessions. I will circulate the timetable uh, with you on uh, tomorrow, and this will be highly beneficial. Also, I will take the sessions on Saturdays and Sunday. So do. connect me today uh, one more session is there on the future doctors of anacademy um, youtube channel so anacademy future doctor you can join me for the brachial plex first session thank you navin thank you so all of you those who want can connect to me on the open house session just now i am conducting that session on the anacademy app so you will get an option when you will see your own students anacademy app where you have downloaded the option of open house thank you all the best keep studying thank you so much